those who know me, hello. For those who don't know me, hi. <laughs> My name is Chamunani Sentamu Robert, also known uh, by my stage name, Bobby Wine. I'm the leader of the National Unity Platform for Political Party, the largest opposition party in Uganda. <laughs> I'm also the leader of the People Power Movement, and uh, I'm also a musician. As a matter of fact, if it was not for the electoral trial of 2021, I would be addressing you as the elected president. Yes. Special thanks to you, Alex, for the invitation and the opportunity to speak on this conference. I also want to salute the members of parliament from the Labour Party and indeed other parties for standing with us to always amplify our voices and echoing our cries for democracy, for the rule of law, and for human rights. Ladies and gentlemen, today, we have a thing, a thing that is so timely, global challenges, collective solutions. It cannot be in a better time than now. Now when the world is fully recovering from a global pandemic, when world leaders are not to the effects of climate change and trying to find solutions. But most importantly, I want to communicate to you, friends, that we have an even bigger pandemic. The pandemic of authoritarianism, growing authoritarianism in the world. You will notice that since 1997, the World Freedom Index is showing alarming results. Almost 40% of the world population live under autocracy. It's only about 20% of the world population that are living in three countries is getting, getting worse and worse. So that is not just a problem limited to the territories where the peace is taken. No. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, even in this, our meetings, we have the governments. Very many of them left their country because of reasons to do with governance. Some of them cannot live in their countries because they are critical of the government where they are supposed to be living. And others, because of the dictatorship and the after effects of dictatorship, like corruption, like gross human rights violations, and others are supposed to leave their country. So you find that the effects of misrule go further and wider than the territories that are being oppressed. And I must remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that dictators read from the same playbook. They advise each other, and sadly, they look out for each other. They cooperate so much in their evil schemes. What we have to ask ourselves, we that profess democracy that profess human rights, we have a big question to ask ourselves. Are we as united as dictators? Are we working hard enough to preserve democratic values, values of human rights and the rule of law, like those that are seeking to destroy them? In the case of Uganda, and I'll talk about so much, about, I'll talk about Uganda so much because that's where I come from. General Seveni, who is now past 80, has bestowed the biggest powers to his son. His son, who he recently elevated to be the chief of our nation's military, just yesterday announced that his military, because it is military, will not allow any civilian ruler, any civilian leader, after General Museveni. Now, General Museveni has been president of our country for close to 40 years. He took over power when I was only four years. I am 42 today, and he's still president. 
in January, he's going to make 39 years in power and still counting. And as if that is not terrible enough, the 80 year old general is in advanced stages of passing power to his son. Now, his son yesterday, less than 48 hours ago, announced that the security forces are not going to allow a civilian to become leader of our country after his father. Now, this is a country that is meant to go to the polls again in January 2026, about a year and very few months from now. That is where we are. What am I requesting you, ladies and gentlemen? First, I will appreciate the steadfast cooperation between the government of the United Kingdom and the people of Uganda. We have a historical relationship that dates back several decades. The UK government has supported the people of Uganda in their, de their development efforts, has supported in maternal reproductive health, has supported in the fight against corruption, has supported in regional security, among others. We appreciate that. But we are asking for much more than that. We know that you, ladies and gentlemen, and you good people can leverage your political and economic influence over Uganda to assist us advance for better governance, to assist us advance for democracy. All we're asking for is a free and fair election. The people of Uganda have for a very long time desired an opportunity of the country. They desired an opportunity to choose their leaders. We do not have that, and we want at least to have that in our lifetime. We know that everything rises and falls on leadership. We know that because the leaders in the UK are accountable to the citizens, that is how countries like this one develop. We want the same. We appreciate the sanctions that have been slapped on the corrupt officials. We appreciate the sanctions that have been slapped on gross human rights violators and we're asking for more of that. We're asking you to help us hold those people accountable because ultimately it is the international voices. It is the voices of the, 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 the development partners that are listening to you so much. While we keep pushing from our angle, we request you to also assist us, knowing that collective efforts and collective solutions are what are going to help countries like ours. I speak about Uganda as a case study, but I know that there are many other countries that are oppressed that the UK deals with. We request you to hold these dictators to the same standards to the values that we hold so dear. Otherwise, it would be so shameful for a world-renowned dictator like General Museveni and his son to proudly stand and say they are having a collaboration and a cooperation relationship with the UK, a country that is known to be a world-renowned democracy. I thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to me, and I thank you for the invitation I thank the people of Uganda for not giving up, and I request you not to give up on us. Thank you very much. Our power, people power.
parenting. If none of us, if one of us is not free, none of us is free. And we have to hold it down. And we will open it, will be forever. We will be and the people of the Bobby in the back of Justin. We have over 9 million victims in Colombia, people that have been displaced, people that have been disappeared, women that have been violated, over 200,000 people disappeared in Colombia. This is the story of a beautiful country called Colombia, impacted by violence and corruption. La buena noticia es que después de 200 años, 200 años de gobierno de derecha, en el 2022, Nos juntamos los pequeños partidos, los de izquierda, los de oposición, los progresistas, y logramos por primera vez llegar al gobierno, tener la bancada de congresistas más grande y llegar al gobierno. Well, we have some good news. After 200 years of constant government from the far right and the right, in 2022, all parties join together, the left, the opposition, different groups that have not been in power, and for the first time we won the election and arrived to government. And at the same time we got the most seats in Congress. Estamos con un programa que se llama Colombia, país de la belleza. Colombia, potencia mundial de la vida. Estamos tratando de parar la guerra, de llegar a la paz, de solucionar el conflicto armado con grupos guerrilleros de izquierda y con grupos paramilitares de extrema derecha. We have uh, slogans that we are uh, living and trying to promote right now with this government. The first is Colombia, a country of beauty and a country with the potential for a great life. We are fighting to stop the war. We are fighting for peace. We are fighting for 
had um, negotiations and had peace talks with all the remaining armed groups, whether it's the guerrillas or the left wing tradition or the paramilitaries coming from the right. Estamos tratando de hacer el cambio, de hacer las reformas sociales a la salud, a la educación, reforma laboral, reforma educativa. Estamos haciendo una agenda ambiental de cambio climático en Colombia. We're trying to put forward proposals for social changes. We've got reforms proposed for health, labor reforms, education reforms, and looking to drastically change how we approach the environmental issues. Somos un gobierno alternativo, progresista. Estamos gobernando contra el establecimiento. Un establecimiento que tiene mucho poder. Las empresas, los bancos, las, los medios de comunicación, la fuerza pública que a veces está en contra del gobierno, muchos sectores poderosos, por eso nos definimos como un gobierno que gobierna contra el establecimiento. We are an alternative government, we are a progressive government. We are fighting in many ways against the establishment itself. We have many powerful elements still remaining, whether it's in the media, whether it's the interests of the banks, whether it's elements inside the armed forces that still have several parts of it against what against the government. We are, we often say, a government in power fighting against the establishment itself. Nuestro presidente Gustavo Petro y nuestra vicepresidenta Francia Márquez es afro. Es una mujer afro, la primera vez en la, en la historia de Colombia que hay una mujer afro en el gobierno. Tienen una política ambiental para proteger la Amazonía, para evitar la deforestación, para hacer transiciones en el President Petro and the Vice President Francia Márquez, Afro-Colombian woman, the first time in Colombia's history that an Afro-Colombian person, particularly woman, has been a Vice President. They're the, uh, a progressive environmental policy, seeking to protect the Amazon, seeking to put forward protect the life of our social community leaders. We need to protect the environment and protect our policies to, uh, for the Amazon. We discovered recently also that there was a plan to assassinate the president that was uncovered. So we also need your eyes on Colombia to stop something like that happening. A plan that was coming from the extreme right linked with the mafias that exist in the late in Colombia. Eso necesitamos el apoyo a la democracia, a la vida y a la paz. Gracias a Justicia por, por Colombia por la invitación. Nos conocimos cuando era abogado, asesor de derechos humanos y ahora me invitaron a este congreso como político parlamentario. Muchas gracias. Gracias a ustedes. So we need your support. We need your support in defense of Colombian democracy, in defense of life and in defense of peace. Thank you to the invitation, thanks to Justice for Colombia. I first got to know them when I was a human rights defender and we now work together in my role as a member of Congress. Thank you all so much. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a moment uh, to talk about 
our favourite topic, which is uh, internal labour practice. Um, but I want to use this opportunity to celebrate. Of course, uh, we talked about earlier Amdak's fantastic first place victory, uh, which was absolutely brilliant. Uh, but I want to use this to thank some of our other candidates who uh, didn't uh, who didn't make it. So first of all, Elizabeth, Councillor Elizabeth, who was running in the councillor, who was running against a pretty damn good machine and ran that damn machine to the bone, uh, but we didn't make it. But next time we'll try uh, and do that. So uh, thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, I also want to thank Kaz, who's been absolutely brilliant. Uh, so yeah, Kaz, stand up, stand up, stand up. Yeah, so, but it's tough. We all know how tough it is to be trans within this party. We know how tough it is to be trans within this party. We know how tough it is to be trans within our, within our politics. And so for her to do it, to stand for this party, to stand as an open Labour candidate, it was a pleasure, a pleasure to campaign uh, uh, for, for that. And so we are, uh, so I'm very, very happy. And then one last thing, I know she's not around, but I just want to say congratulations to Elsie Greenwood, who's now our youth rep. Uh, she's been amazing, she's always backed us in the long run uh, as an NEC youth rep. It's so great to, to do it. I am very happy to announce our next guest. We can't talk about international managers without talking about uh, the, the situation and the war in Gaza. Uh, we now know a year ago that this uh, that this terrible attack on Israel happened, and since then it has just been chaotic, terrible war. Not only the Hamas attack, but the Israeli response in Gaza. I am very, very proud uh, to, to announce our next speaker, someone who is he's not waging war, but is waging a peace. And so my peace is. Uh, Give a warm welcome to the CEO of Breaking the Silence, Josh Dahinder Shaw. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. This is weird if I feel like this when I literally came from the plane <laughs> and have time to change and then to look for you know like a proper human being here. Um. But just to correct, I am not the CEO of the Great Designs. I've been for many years, but not anymore. Uh, let me just say a few words about myself um, as a background to get into Gaza. So uh, I'm a Jerusalem born and raised Israeli Jew, grew up in what you would call the political right wing side of Israeli politics. Did my high school in a settlement in the West Bank. I have five brothers and sisters who live in settlements today. Um, like many of the Israelis my age, once I graduated high school, I joined the IDF. We have a draft in Israel. I served for three years as an infantry combat soldier and a commander from March 2001 to March 2004, so more or less the peak of the violence of the Second Intifada. I was two years in the West Bank, and it's what I've done and seen during my service that brought me to where I am today and shaped my politics, my worldview, and my activism today. To be honest, so once I got out of the army in 2004, I was fortunate to be involved with the group that started Breaking the Silence, and that has been my adult life until 2020, uh, when I stepped down from the leadership of the organization to them, just continued to be involved as an activist um, in mainly working on some international Israeli policy vis-a-vis -vis the continent. To be honest, it's not the most extreme versions of violence that I've witnessed or inflicted that brought me to where I am today. It was more of a day-to-day -day, but not a routine of military rule over millions of people in the West Bank that brought me to where I am today. I'll maybe share with you one of the things we used to do as, a, as soldiers in the West Bank, let's do what we call in the Israeli military, the idea of making our presence felt. I don't know if you've heard this phrase before. The concept in the IDF says that if Palestinians will get the feeling that the IDF is all the time everywhere, they'll be afraid to attack. 
So what do you do to make them feel this way? You make your presence felt. And in different parts of the West Bank, it will manifest itself in different ways. But in a place like Hebron, where I served for over a year, which is an urban setting, you have 850 settlers living in the midst of 200,000 Palestinians. The way we made our presence felt was, we had about three IDF patrols 24-7 making their presence felt. In my time, it was eight hour shifts. Today, it's 12 hour shifts. You started your night shift patrol 10 o'clock at night till six o'clock in the morning, walking the streets of the old, old city of Hebron, we call it the Kasba. Bump into a house. It's not a house we have intelligence about. It's a random house. The sergeant, the officer who leads the patrol, chooses the house. Wake up the family, search the place. You can yourself imagine the dynamics. What happens when a military unit enters your house one o'clock in the morning? You finish searching the place. You go out to the street, knock on some doors, throw some shock grenades, make some noise, run to the other corner of the street, and then another house. Wake up the family. And that's basically how you pass your eight hour shift 24 hours a day, seven days a week. From September 2000, when the Second Intifada started until today, it didn't stop for one second. The idea is very simple. Every Palestinian needs to feel the Israeli military is breathing down your neck. You never know when we're going to show up, what we're going to do, how many we're going to be, when it's going to start, when it's going to end. It's to do what we call on the briefing wall. Yeah, the official formal phrasing is. That's the Hebrew phrase, I literally translate it, to create the sense of being chased, of being pursued inside the Palestinian population. Because the only way to rule millions of people without rights is to make them fear you, and once they get used to a level of fear, you have to increase it and increase it, and it's a whole thought about it. And I bring up this story because I believe it's crucial and important not only to talk about where we are now, but what brought us to where we are now. Because context matters. And obviously I don't believe there is context that can justify the massacre of October 7 against Israeli communities in the south around Gaza. But also anyone who tries to talk about what happened in October 7 as if the conflict began that day is not serious. It is hiding and camouflaging. I think conflict, context, it's not about justification, it's about explaining and understanding. Because without context, we cannot understand how we got there and how, we, how it is possible to get out of where we are. And in this case, it's very clear that the context is 70 plus years of Palestinian displacement, 15, 16, 7 years of military occupation, over 15 years of the siege of Gaza. And in a way, anyone who cares or wants to protect Jewish and Palestinian life yeah, must understand that the way forward needs to be with addressing the root causes of this conflict. And also October 7 is not a context that can justify the disproportionate use of force that Israel is now doing in Gaza, the systematic IHL violations and the way the IDF operates in Gaza. It explains, but it cannot justify. Um, I think that's why, from my perspective, what is immediate and what is necessary is first and foremost an immediate ceasefire. If there is one thing for me to call on the British government, the UK government, is to push for an immediate ceasefire. That's the only way to stop the catastrophe in Gaza, to bring back the Israeli hostages. But then, to put all the efforts for a diplomatic initiative that will address the root causes that brought us until today, because otherwise we're just back to October 6, and we don't go beyond that, and that's exactly what brought us to where we are today. And now let me just to finish 
one thing, which is about the West Bank. Yeah, there's a lot of attention, rightly so given, to the horrible and horrific reality on the ground in Gaza. But this Israeli government, which is the most extremist Israeli government in the history of our country, is using the fact that all eyes are in Gaza in order to advance the most extreme policies ever introduced to the West Bank, advancing annexation. Since this government took power, we are in a peak of advancement of housing units and settlements. Destruction of Palestinian homes and humanitarian structures. Part of them are financed by the UK government, by your tax money. Peak of settler violence. Displacement of more than 18 Palestinian entire communities. Land grab and levels we haven't seen for decades in the West Bank. And I could go on and on and on with the list. Now, the president Robert Robert Na wewe kutiolwa lero, asinka nye mwa bakuru, wangiri ya yuke. Basobolo kudisika singa mkun songe zenja ulo, butia na che marida wa ino kufa kuntebe ye kwanga ya Uganda. Nsonga zinono, seza munino, ngaba singo unji wa zero oza. Gualaba, nguo yinzo kula wano gamba ili sibi ya maanyi. Nena che marida wali, nsajia watu gaba gamu bugu maa. Bili wala bebi ntunga bino yebu zomulenza anjiji za kachi. Luwachi umulenza ali siria za alimede ko. Kumanyi ya manyi iloguli lila abantu. Agamba na muwa kasenta akalia bifemu ya gana. Chitegeza chinecho. E Uganda abantu batono nyaba ine mitime migumu. Gwoso ulo kuwe nsimbi. Nazi gana. Nebo ulaba nga chagula ino batisenta mamuteze nsimbi. Mpiti rivuomunji nazi gana. Chitegeza anti alimu vya dala. Ili guangali aliagaliza viru nji. Ayakala la benge guangali chuka. Angaba na Uganda fena fena. Tulia nyumiditiza mchie nkanyi. So singo uluwa lero niti waluwa balifunamu. Waluwa wanyigiri zibu wanga tapaya nache baliganyo. Uluwa munga naba mbali gobu wa muku kifuba. Omuli ogoba bantu kumataka gabo mbalaba. Kuliwe yecha wanga yete kama omuku wanga yeji ambude. Ewe loba tichakula nyi senta musibi ya gala mbukule mbezewe. Ayagala nga bali una Uganda. Uwe nyumiditiza muku wangaliyo. Ayagala nga bali una Uganda umayanti wa nkoze katono. Kekange kinkoze. Na wakoze chinene. Uwebusobo zibuo. Ni wane Uganda umuavu na umu gaga. Bona baka haba chienkanyi. Nanti na umu gaga kwa tensi mbizu kendo kusugula. Na usa nge misole jimu jivu wako. Mbutufu nga jenya miza. Ngatasura kujiga nyuru wa munge guanga. Ndi mule merira. Bebo sanga nga bagenze kumawanga nga gambo wange. Kankulele mitala wama yanja. Nsi mbizi demba maguru meru. Kusingo kuziza muguanga liyango kulikula kulanya. Ebi roba tichakura nisenta mbi ya koye. Na gamba katusalama gezi, tuwe kulevo yoga salida mu Uganda. Katu wakileze ganyemu ni bali abantu abatu singa ko, haka kula kula nenda. You know, I'm like a dog when I'm trying to get through this uh, open labor stuff. And Tess has always been the calm voice that we needed. Tess is amazing. When it's, if it is, if it's not taken on anti-Semitism within our party and within our politics, it is advocating so many other things and just being a really, really hard worker. Tess represents the best of open labor and the best of the labor movement. So I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you so much for your hard work. So on that note, uh, I'll get the last word. On that note, thank you so much for coming.
I don't, I don't know how long this place is open or stick around. In case you were wondering what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Dawn Box Party in an hour. Obviously, Obviously <laughs> best part of conference. Thank you so much to Bobby and the Andandas for being great. Uh, Open labour, I just feel like you're a lot better. Uh, but thank you so much. Solidarity, have a good, safe night, and enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, yeah, anyone who wants to take a picture with Bobby, you can come to the front, uh, please do. Uh, we're going to stick around uh, before, before uh, having things up. But yeah, thank you so much. Bill! 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 Nangi, <laughs> Nasa Obodi wa polisi, obodi mujasi, obodi wa obodi obodi musomesa, obodi entertainer, obodi musician, obodi artist. Obodi wa boda boda. Chona chona chosobolo kolo na kungati na fiyamu seven ni chikole. Ngato ni na guwebuzi zako. Eh, ono 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 Ante mwuri dan mau mau biata ni sokwe yogeza. Ogutopi koko gwa mau 
bugendeza dala mu bini etwaga na kuulira ko ngewe twako bya social media simanyi bile bya nsereko na guno kuteka tetwaga la kuuliza ko we kuti bitandika mseve ni singa tati tali ko kutubonya abonya kati singa tali yali kadaka kugiriza gabozi bozi ga age limit kuyingirawo kati bana yuganda kibaka kitukakata ko fena fena je tuli ko kubera nga agabozi boza ko twaga la abantu abatu bakube mboko amanyi kwana kwana gali mu bantu 